So previously, I tried making a Stone Age blade using obsidian and some napping. And next I wanna move into metalworking, which is kind of a learned skill. So before I move into casting more complicated metals like bronze, it's generally recommended you start out with an easier metal like aluminum. So you do a little trial run at casting using aluminum, just some scrap aluminum cans. It's not the greatest material to use, but uh, for my basic trial needs, it should work. And I'm just gonna make, right, recreate a little Minecraft sword and uh, see if I can get metal casting down before I move on to making my own bronze from scratch. Normally, when I attempt projects in fields I'm not familiar with, I try to work with an experienced professional. However, we've been having trouble finding one on this topic, so I want to get some practice in and make my rookie mistakes now instead of later. Metalworking can potentially be really dangerous and involves both extreme heat and sometimes dangerous vapors. Make sure you use proper safety equipment, and if you are interested in doing this yourself, I recommend also checking out other videos, articles, and books from more experienced metalworkers for a better guide. My first step is making the casting medium, green sand. I follow the recipe that combines 100 pounds of sand, 12 pounds of bentonite clay, and a gallon of water. All three need to be thoroughly mixed and stomped on through a process called mulling, which helps coat each sand grain with clay. Next, building the casting flat, which is basically a pair of boxes that will hold the two sides of the sand mold. I eventually want to make a bronze age short sword, so I figured I'd build a flask that's large enough for that future use, which made it need to be pretty big. For an initial trial, I thought I'd try something super basic for the mold, a pop can. Once filled with sand, the sand needs to be packed down as tight as possible so that it will hold the shape. Then I quickly realized I don't even have enough sand to fill the first half of the mold. Now to melt the cans. I can't touch it. It's so pretty. Like pudding. Pop cans and made a pop can. Messed up a few things, and uh, from that we'll learn and uh, hopefully do a better job casting next time. Now for a second attempt. I forgot to cover my sand, so I need to add more moisture and mull it all over again. This time I scaled down my box to a much more manageable size and cut some boards to screw into the bottom to help hold the sand in place as I flip it and form the mold. Also picked up a sifter. You want just the finest sand on the edge of the mold as it'll give you the best detail and smoothest edges. However, the sifter I bought was apparently too fine grain and mostly just got gunked up. Once full, I screwed another board to the top flipped it over and removed the bottom. Now I can make the second half of the mold using the top flask. Then I can pull out the toy sword. This time I'm experimenting with a system called gating where you pour the metal into a gate, which then flows into the actual mold. This is supposed to help with a variety of issues you can face 
from controlling shrinkage, the speed and turbulence of the metal, and also trapping the impurities in the metal so they don't wind up in the casting. So we got some pop cans and some scrap aluminum I'm gonna melt down. I'm also gonna add some flux thanks to a little suggestion of one of our Patreon supporters. The combination of salt and potassium chloride to uh, help yield a little bit more metal. Blew the side off of this guy. It's the first time using the big crucible. I think we uh, didn't quite use it right. I think it needs to be heated up slower or something. So we're back to the medium sized one. Seems to be all melted now. Next thing I'm going to. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> no, it's making the cut. So next thing I'm going to skim off the surface and remove some of the uh, DOS, I think it's called. It's kind of the uh, impurities and such. So we're going to move that and then be ready to pour. Since we might not quite have enough, we've also got the kiln going, melting a smaller batch of aluminum. So we have that as a backup too. And uh, hopefully my mold will work. Let's see what happens. A little short. Yep, ran short. Also, it's slightly slanted this way. That's why I didn't go up there. Yep, uh, that's something to consider. Level ground. Oh, it's stuck. Oof. All right, so it's a, it's a decent first attempt. I think the biggest thing that I learned so far is uh, Gotta keep it on level ground, otherwise it's gonna pull up the other end. But yeah, I gotta make sure I'm level next time and uh, make sure I can get enough aluminum in it. Um, got a nice little pattern. I managed to keep that from the original. It's a little short. It's cold out. That means I need to start the process all over again. Hey, it's full. Ah, that's where it's dimming. Oh man, that's weird. There's not any sand there. Why would I do that? I wonder if I didn't vent it enough. I feel like there's trapped air that couldn't seep into. So close, but still not quite there. Now, one last attempt with some added vents poked through it.
finally success, or at least close enough. Sword. It took three attempts. I was able to cast a little recreation of Minecraft sword out of aluminum. Learned a lot of things along the way. Important to keep in the level, having enough to fill it, needing vent holes for the gas to escape. All things that should hopefully help me when I eventually make bronze. So I could probably spend like another week grinding this, and making this look really nice, but I got a plane to catch. Cause I get to California, I'm gonna hopefully get some bronze so I can make my bronze sword for real. I'll save all polishing for that. I'm actually back from California now and managed to get both a copper ore and stibnite, which I should be able to smelt and use to make my own bronze from scratch in an upcoming video. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.